Hi, it's Matt here from pilotpracticeexams.com. Let's take a look at these takeoff performance charts. Now, these really are the you know bane of people's existence uh, for their RPL, their PPL, and their CPL performance exam. And the reason is, is CASA is requiring typing answers in a lot of cases, and also the, the level of accuracy that they're requiring is just incredible. Let's have a bit of a look at this and, and see how they work. Now, you'll notice down the bottom there's a few limiting factors here and you need to be aware of those. But let's see where we start. So we'll zoom in. This is where we're going to start in this box down here, the bottom left box. And the first thing you're going to do is from the uh, Q&H, the elevation, you're going to work out your pressure height. You're going to enter on this side here at the pressure height that they give you. So if it was 3,000 feet, you'd enter there and you'd go straight across. If it was 2,000 feet, enter there and go straight across. And you go all the way across until you hit the temperature line that's relevant. So let's assume that we've, uh, say, calculated our pressure height and it's 3,000 feet and it's 20 degrees C. I'm going to make that line a bit smaller so we can be way more accurate. <clears throat> what we do is we go from there. We have to go vertically. So I'm just going to scroll a little bit. And again, this needs to be deadly accurate, okay? Or you're going to get these wrong. Because by the time you uh, multiply out, you know, multiple lines with multiple intersection points, getting them wrong is going to make your way out. And especially if you get them wrong early. So what you do is you draw that. You need to make sure it's dead set vertical. And so in your exam, you're going to want to use magnification glasses. You're going to want to use rulers to cross check that this gap up here is the same as this gap down here. And you may even want to use like those little protractor things, which are like a, a double compass, you know, with two pointy ends on them. And you check the gap here and then you check the gap up here and you make sure it's right. And if it's not, you redraw it. So I just like to go all the way through. That way I can just measure it up here, measure it right down here. And, um, you know, we're going to find out whether it's accurate or not. So then what we need to do is they will give us a takeoff distance available or they might actually be asking us to find a takeoff distance available. Now, if they give us one, we would then intersect this line. So let's say they said 700 metres. And then that would become the point there that we need to draw our next line across from. Okay, but this is favourite type of question is, what is the takeoff distance required? So if they give us that type of question, what we'll do is we'll actually come down here next and so they might have given us a weight. Now, let's say they gave us a weight of 1,000 kilos. And again, we need to be deadly accurate. So that's not accurate enough. I'll make that accurate like that. And let's say we had a headwind of five knots. So we want to, again, we want to use our measuring equipment and get exactly in the middle. To do that, I'm going to actually zoom in so that I can get it. And what I'll do is I will try and estimate. I'm going to go with, say, I don't think that's halfway. I'm going to go across a little bit. Okay, I think that's about halfway. It's actually easier for you to do this than me. So what we'll do is we'll use that intersection point, and we're going to draw up. Okay, I'm going to keep going up, and we need to make, again, we need to make sure that's dead set vertical. I'm going to go all the way up. And that'll do for the moment. Demonstrate. Now, then they're going to tell us what the upslope and downslope is. Now, there's a bit of a catch here. The CAO says that, the Civil Aviation Order says that we need to ignore slopes of 1% and less. CASA being CASA and loving to trick you has two ways of asking this question. One is they will just give you a scenario and they'll say, you know, it's, it's runway such and such at airport such and such and it has a 1% slope. Um, go and calculate the ODR. If they do that, you need to apply the CAO. In other words, you're going to ignore slopes of 1%. If they say to you, given the following, calculate the ODR, and then now you've got the following, and it's uh, the following includes a 1% slope, then you need to include it because they're asking you to calculate it given the following. And you just need to be very acutely aware of that. So let's say we have a a 2% downslope. There's the downslope. These ones over here, so 2 and 4 there. There's a the 2% upslope over there, and there's the level slope. So we look for where our line intersects the 2% downslope, which is right there. 
And again, I haven't got that accurate enough. I'll just drag it across and then we'll fix it up. That looks good, but it's not level. So now I need to make it perfectly level. And that now, this over here, it becomes our answer. So I'll just zoom out so you can see what we've done. We started down here. We started with the pressure height. We went across the temperature. And we go vertically. And if they gave us a takeoff distance, then we would see where that intersects our vertical line and then we draw across but in this case they didn't give us one what they gave us was the weight so we entered here at the weight and we came across to the headwind component of five knots and then we went vertically we came up here and we saw where this line intersected the two percent down slope it was there and we've drawn it across and then now where those two lines intersect that is our takeoff distance required. So in other words, you can see there's 700 meters. So it's around about 600 and you would, I would get out my measuring equipment and my glasses and I would have a really good look at that. And I would S or my ruler and I would measure that. And I would say that that's about 690 meters. Now what you're looking for is not the gap across here. What you're looking for is these two lines are parallel. So you want to come off there with a perpendicular and you want to know the distance from there to there compared to the distance through to there and that's where you would measure and that would give you an estimate of about say 690 meters and that would be your answer and you'd type in 690. Again if you're out by around about 10 or 15 meters on that you're going to get that question wrong. So I'm Matt from Pilot Practice Exams and that's how to do what take off weight charts from the RPL, PPL, CPL workbook. And if you like that, head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com. We've got so many practice exams there for you. We really do have a huge range of resources, PDFs, checklists, the whole lot. So head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com and thanks for watching.